Schaffst du. Schaffst du. I don't snap up. Just walk in front of him. Cuffs up. Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful day today and welcome to Working Horse Through Gym. Today we have Duke out line driving for the first time in several months. And if you watched our last video with Earl, you can recall we had a lot of troubles with him. Nothing major, but still a lot of troubles trying to turn around on me and just not behaving. So far, I just barely came out of the barn, but so far, Duke is working a little bit better than Earl. That doesn't mean he'll he'll continue, but right at the moment he's doing great. Duke is a lot more of a seemingly <laughs> docile horse. Earl seems to have a little bit more energy just like his brother Baron. Cut stop. And uh, so I'm not sure even how well of a pair of horses they would make. My Duke. But you never know at this early age. So anyways, um, so far Duke is walking pretty well, just the way he was when I finished with him last year or last few months ago and uh, yeah he's he seems to be doing great this morning we had gone out to the pasture to get him because we had let them both out into the other pasture with lady and brie we were hoping to bring lady in also to put a shoe on her front foot that she lost her shoe on and uh, she did not let us catch her so we forget, we gave up on that idea for right now, although I'll get her eventually. Careful. Careful. Cheek, cheek, cheek. Oh. Okay, there's our first spin. Cheer it. Cast up. But if you recall, when I was working Earl, it wasn't so bad as for him. As it was for him, he was worse. But, uh... <laughs> tell you the honest truth, you know, at this stage, I'd prefer a horse like Earl than Duke. Duke, we're kind of half guessing, is gonna turn into a horse like Ken, which so many people prefer. But I, prefer one with a little bit more life than that. So I'm going to make a quick turn right here. It's not going to like it, I'm sure. Careful. But he did fine. And we'll turn around and go the other way. I was thinking maybe Duke and Ken would be a great I bet they would as far as um, their speed and their, you know, their, their gait, pace, but uh, they would never be size-wise. You did say that Duke is a little taller than Earl at this point. Yeah, but these guys are never going to get that terribly tall. Duke is a horse, I think. Looking for lady. Yeah, I think a whip would be very helpful. When you're when you're training colts like this, especially colts that that know what to do, but just have had time off, it's very important not to let them get away with things 
like if they stop uh, and you try and get them to go and they don't go, you really need to get a little bit harsh on them, I guess you could say. Um, if you don't, they will get the best of you and you'll run into a lot of troubles. So having a whip or getting right after them with the lines is so important. It may seem mean, but I can pretty well guarantee that you will regret it if you let them get their way. I don't think he was scarred for life after that. <laughs> no. Little bit. But he is walking around very nicely and going where I want him to go, which is good. We have a lot going on today and this whole week actually. And we'll try and share a bunch of that stuff with you. I want to hitch up uh, or I want to drive Earl around and see if he's better today than he was the first time I drove him around a couple days ago. This is actually Monday morning. So they've been out to pasture all weekend. But as far as behaving, Duke is doing great. I have to say they were a joy to bring in from the pasture. They just led so nicely and came but, right along. Well, you had Earl and he well, did, but Duke did not. Actually, oh, he, that's, he would okay. have, he, I gotta say my end was good. He wanted to go back and stay with Lady. <laughs> but uh, he came eventually. Maybe it was just because I was leading. leading. He liked you better, maybe. I doubt it. But I did think he's usually the more strong-willed one of the two. I'm very pleased with how he's doing this morning for the first time in months. He's a good boy. So I'm just going to go around a couple more times and put him away and we'll get Earl out here. Okay, Duke is put away. He did great. Time for Earl's quick lesson. See if he does better than he did last time. I'm expecting some improvements, but you never know. We're going to go I without- I don't really think he did that bad. We're going to go without Brenda helping. Do you really think he did that bad Test last up. time? Test up. Test up. No, he, he did overall pretty good, but. He had quite a few times where he wanted to be the boss. So you can see I have my lines on this side, which is where I prefer to drive. But because of what he did the last time, I am going to be prepared to get my line over to both sides of him to keep him going the way I want him to go. So if he behaves better this time, I will do a little bit more stopping and starting with him this time, but we'll have to see if he behaves himself first. If you watch the last video, right at this point, he kind of took out out of to try to run with me. Did you hear that lady whinnied? Yeah. From the pasture. 
which always makes a trying time when they've got horses and they're talking back and forth to other horses. Jailer. Cheek. Cheek. Tackle. Good boy. Oh. 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 Oh, 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 cast up, cast up, cast up. Now to some of you guys, that crack that I gave him might have seemed harsher than he needed, but I can tell you it was not. <laughs> I've said this before, and I'll say it again. This is the way I do it. This is not the only way it can be done, but this is the way I do it, and I've had very good luck doing it this way. And, uh, you know, when a horse needs a bit of a crack, I will give it to him. The trick is, the secret is to know him when and how much. And at least you guys have watched a lot of my videos will know that it's very rare when that actually happens. He is doing so much better than a couple days ago, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. I could see myself, even this week, hitching him up to the, the scoot and tying him to the truck body. On my cart for a single horse, I've been waiting for my lighter shafts that I'm getting made up. And, and I hope to get that done soon because I would prefer using those lighter shafts on these younger colts. Although last summer when Baron was three, he used them and he was fine. Well, he is obviously doing really good today with his progress. The difference between him and Duke are pretty great. With his attitude? Attitude and just speed, you know. If I was trying to drive the two together, it'd be a nightmare. You know, right now? Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna try and stop him. Oh. 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 No. No. Oh. Good boy, who? Oh. Ho. Oh. 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 I cast up. So his stopping has come along better and standing. But of course, we'll have to continue working with that. But for right now, let's go on to something else and show you something different. So here we are out in the hayfield again. We're trying to get a little bit more um, round bale and wrap done in my clover field here. And so Owen, our neighbor, is coming up this evening to bale this up. And uh, he wants me to um, rake it in such a way it's kind of two windrows together. And uh, what he wants is the windows to look like um, a double barrel shotgun. So sometimes it's hard to do, but I try to put two windrows just a couple, a foot or so apart from each other. Off to our left, you can see our cows. We actually put a fence around the lower piece there. And of course that one piece out in the center never get cut. And they probably won't eat too much of that, but I've actually just, just the other day, I had uh, the tile, tile guy was here and he's um, 
came to see the property and we're all set for him to come in here to do some tiling in a, hopefully in a couple weeks. And so I figured down below here where I want to tile, I might as well have the cows chew up what grass is there before the tile comes in. So that's what we're doing this evening. And uh, as soon as, as Owen comes down and wrap, uh, bales this up, we will come back with the horses and uh, pick the bales back up. I don't think there'll be too many. Um, but I just want to get this cleaned up. We still have a lot of hay to go, a lot of hay ground to go, but uh, um, we still need the weather to make dry hay, and we're not getting it. Yeah. And you had this tiny window where you figured you could get yeah. this done, so just barely enough time. There's a good view of the double barrel shotgun right there. Oh. That's that. So we have, well, we got six windrows there. And I don't know, how many bales going to be there? Might not be much more than five. There's not that much. There's not going to be much there. And that's okay. But we'll get it cleaned up. I really wanted to get this cleaned up because, well, for a bunch of reasons. But for one reason, I actually have some manure I want to spread. And I like to spread it on ground that's freshly cut. And so I come in there and clean my horse barn area out and get that spread. So maybe tomorrow I can get that done. So in a few minutes, we'll get back out here. Well, it'll be another couple hours, actually. We'll be back out here with the horses to pick up the bales. Well, there's my neighbor finishing up the round bales. Looks like I'm a little bit off on the amount. Got four, five, six bales. That might be seven and a half bales when he gets all done. This is pretty darn wet hay, I'll tell ya. Hold my skid stick and lift these bales. Put them on the wrapper. I wanted to show you guys. I'll catch him when he's ready to to um, unload the bale. How that works. As you can see by the tracks, it's still pretty wet in here. I had Brenda come out and do this. She's a much better runner than I am. Actually, you might as well take it right up there. So Owen's all done. He's wrapping, I'm putting the twine on right now, and he's gonna carry that one right up to the, my bale wrapper.
Are we going all the way up? We're going up, all the way up? Careful set. Boys, walk, boys. Careful step. Keep it going, boys. Which way are we going? Turning around or out that way? I guess I can, right? Wow. Hold it back. Hold it back. Where you want them? 
Careful step. Oh. Oh. Okay, go put these guys away and I'll wrap these up. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what the word hoe means? Good. Why don't you go try the back end? No! Careful step. Step. Well, you told me to come over here. I don't know what you mean, and I don't know what I'm doing. Back up to China. Back up to China. Back up. Careful. Sorry about all this backing up. do it at all. Um, I'm making a little progress. Got a long ways to go. But it wasn't so bad. These guys are so good. I'm s sorry I made them back up so far. I started so far out, but I feel like we have a relationship so that they're, they were nice to me and, and um, help, help me out a little bit. Okay. So here I am getting my first bale ready to go onto the wrapper. So we have seven bales we need to wrap up tonight. I did 10 bales about a week ago off the same field. And that's with my new wrapper. Before that, I had Owen with wrap some up for me with his wrapper. But as you can see right here, I made the mistake of my forks were down too low and actually cut the wrap. So I ended up having to kind of re, um, redo the wrap and I'll show you in a second how I do that. A lot of people will use a spear when they're handling these, handling these round bales, which actually works a little bit better than my forks, but uh, you use what you have and that's what I have. Sometimes, once in a while, I'll just take one of the forks and drive it into the top of the bale and lift it up that way, and sometimes that works okay, and that allows me to set the bale down on the wrapper a little bit easier and less apt to break the, the wrapping. So when the wrap breaks 
like it did this particular time. You just have to grab it and pull it around to the back side of the bale and just wrap it and tie it into the twine and then it'll hold itself as you start spinning it around to wrap the bale. Years ago I had borrowed a wrapper from a guy and I hated using it because you have to wrap it 24 times. It has to spin around 20 full, full revolutions and it's such a pain you get, had to kind of twist around all the time to watch it. And with, with this new wrapper it comes with a counter which I really really love and here it is right here and you can actually see the amount of times that the bale is wrapped is is uh, 10 is 11 um, and that works really good So after the wrapping is all done, it's just simply a matter of lifting up, lifting up the wrapper and the bale tips right off. I usually pull ahead a little ways so that it doesn't hit the other bale, but that's all there is to it. And then generally the wrap stays right there so when you set the bale down, the next bale down on it, it'll stay in place and it will, you can just start wrapping it and it will stay right where it belongs. So the last thing we do is put the paint, paint some numbers on bales so that we know which fields they came out of and which quality of hay that is in each bale. So on these that we did today, we'll just put the number three on because it's all from the good clover hay that we bailed up. We got our bales wrapped and my parting word is it's a marshmallow world in the summer. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and join us again for our next adventure next time. Have a great rest of your day.